Yes. Is this part of the test we're taking this week? Yes. Is this going to be on the test? Yes. Okay. Good. Questions are out. So, yes, we're still working on the first test. And we're going to talk about tap and die, which now makes me think of one of my more favorite King of the Hill episodes, which I could show you a break, where he goes to the Megalomart to get a tap and die in the <laughs> 40. Is <laughs> <laughs> this what you're looking for? So, we're going to talk about this. If I can just get the thing I want open. There we go. Okay. Uh, tap and die. First, we'll talk about tap and die because that talks about threads and we can get into uh, our hardware stuff. So, tap and die. That's not like, you know, why don't you go tap and die? You know, it's like, it's like two things. It's tools. All right, tap and die. Uh, uh, tap is used. Uh, tap, tap. Tap is used to uh, create internal or external threads. Internal. Internal. internal threads. And then for a die is used to create external. external. Uh, tap and dies can also be used to fix threads that are broken. Bad. But you have to be really careful with that. If you've got a, some hardware on an aircraft that has damaged threads and you're fixing it with the tap and die, uh, or you use a die on a bolt, you have really have to ask yourself, why am I doing this instead of just getting a new bolt? So, or if you're using a tap on a nut, why are you just not getting a new nut? Um, although sometimes we have threads internal to a component, you know, like a crankcase that has been drilled and tapped, that would make some sense, but uh, I'm fixing threads, I'm probably looking to helicoil it. Anyway, we'll get around to that. So, let's see, a, well, I'm sorry, this was really A definitions. I know I should have just stuck with a head definition. I thought it'd be all cool and then change what I was doing. I'm like, why would I do that now? Screwed up my line there, so thread types. We have a lot of different type of threads. And this is going to become critical from this point on. Actually became critical before this. Uh, you just didn't know it. That you do not mix and match the thread types. Like you can't put a metric nut on a standard bolt or you can't do it the other way. You can't put coarse threads on fine threads. You will try. <coughs> So thread types, there are different types of threads. We can pretty much distill it down to two types, but there's actually several different types. So some of these I've never even heard of or even explained in this way except for I'm going to explain it now. Unified thread standards. <clears throat> or the UTS. You're like, oh, of course, UTS. <clears throat> All right, under that we have, and I've really never heard of unified thread standards, but you, you will often hear the subcategories quite a bit. So we have national course. Course, C O A R. Course threads, course, and united course, which would be N C, which is very common. You'll hear that, just national course. So that's going to be your, your very common one, and united course would be U uh, N C. <coughs> and there is national fine. Which is your very common one. And United Find? United Find. So we have an F and U. F. Um, 
and F. United National Fine. All right, so your NC and NF are common. So that's what you're going to see all the time. Um, the only difference is that uh, NF, let's put this here for difference. And this is a very odd thing. It's like almost like a Phil say G with bit information. Only difference is that uh, National Fine uh, has a one inch dash 14. So one inch wide diameter, 14 threads per inch. While a UNF has a one inch dash 12 threads per inch. And if you're dealing with one inch bolts in aircraft, it's like, wow, we work on, while you're working on heavy stuff. All right, so to be very clear, in aviation, we're either going to have national course or national fine of all of these. These are just some other ones that exist within it. So let me see, A, B, C. Uh, we have United National Extra Fine. <coughs> Extra fine bolt, NEF, and UNEF, UNEF, <coughs> and United Special. We're not going to see any of those in class? Nope. UNS. What would those be used for? Don't even know. Okay. Don't know where they came from, never saw one, don't know. United. Occasionally you get into something that may have a, a component that has special bolts and stuff in it. You shouldn't have been taken apart to begin with. So, all right. So modern aircraft, or I should say aircraft that I know about, so um, aircraft, hardware, is UNF, UNC, or NPT, which I did not mention NPT, did I? Mm. That is pipe. National pipe thread. So it's one of those things. And so help me, so help you, when we get into next semester, the three, uh, whatever, 16, 17, whatever before that, um, 13, 14, 14, 15, 16, anyway, the, uh, when we do carburetors, fuel injection, and all that stuff, if you screw a pipe thread into a hose, I will have to make an example out of you. <laughs> we'll get more into that. All right, uh, let's see. This applies, and this is interesting, this applies to both metric, <coughs> And standard threads. So NC and NF can be both metric and standard? That is correct. All right, so we have different. We gotta either have in a bolt, fine or coarse, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're gonna keep that straight fine and coarse. You cannot screw the two together. Pipe is something completely different. You can try. And the reason why I said that a minute ago is because hoses, which kill people a lot, uh, mechanics and hoses do not go well. We talked about this in 309. How many deaths happen because people screw hoses on and then get distracted and then don't tighten the hose because hoses aren't safetyed. Well, the problem with hoses, aside from that, which is bad enough, the Threads on a hose also somewhat correspond to threads on pipe threads. Pipe threads are angled, and pipe goes on the pipe, and it's this angled thread. As it screws in, it wedges itself in, and that's what creates the um, fluid type fitting. Well, hoses, the thread sizes and such, somewhat sort of correspond to pipe. So if you want to, you can kind of force a hose onto a piece of pipe fitting, and it will stay put, kind of, uh, but the minute you put any pressure to it, I mean, any pressure just sprays out everywhere. 
And uh, so, unfortunately, it hasn't happened in a couple semesters, but I've had several groups of students where I didn't stress this when we're doing so much work with carburetors and hoses, they would screw things on backwards. They would force pipe threads into straight threads, force straight threads into pipe fittings. I mean, just got all backwards and, oh, no, no, Kevin, why it's leaking? So we're not going to let that happen, Blaine. Um, all right, so that's what we'll pay attention here. So thread size. Thread size. All right, we talked about this in 309. Uh, threads are classified by by what? How do we determine thread sizes? Threads per inch. Threads per inch. What's the first thing now? Typically? Diameter. Diameter. Diameter of what? The shank. Shank. Diameter. Shank. Not the head Not size. Not the head. <laughs> <laughs> Diameter. <laughs> and threads per inch. Threads per inch. See, so a common, a common aircraft bolt is a quarter inch diameter by 28 threads per inch. This would be? Fine thread. Fine thread, UNF. Is it more common to just find mainly fine thread on there, or is it just? If you get to roll the dice, 90% of the time it's fine thread in aviation. If you're working on an engine that's painted gray, it's going to be all coarse thread. <laughs> Lycoming uses coarse thread on almost everything. Continental uses almost fine, all fine thread. Airframes, you use almost all fine thread. Because that, that's a lot different from uh, automotive and just really any other facet in, in the world. Coarse thread? Mainly coarse thread. <coughs> fine thread. Um, how do you measure the outside diameter of a bolt? Near calipers. I think calipers are the best. It's hard to measure a round piece of round stock with a ruler. So I use dial calipers. Great tool for that. And how do we measure thread pitch? Pitch gauge. Pitch gauge. Pitch gauge. All right. We already have dealt with that, so everybody's up to speed on that. Then we have a class fit. This is how things fit together, the looseness of the bolt and nut, if you will. So aircraft bolts have four classes. Four, I'll say four classes of fit. According to Fastenal, there are six classes. One A and B, two A and B, three A and B. A is external threads and B is internal, but I'm not gonna do all that. So, just so you know. Class one. Class one, a very loose fit. That can easily be turned by hand. Classes, is there any like um, metric by how much like end play you might have with them either? Like how much you can move the bolt? No, because be, how much you can move it would be dependent on the height. Okay. So they, they could, they could say at one inch it moves X number, but they okay. don't. I took it out of my notes, but I want to say that class one fit stove bolt SIG column. Um, and it was designed so that you could, and I read this somewhere, you could, tanks were supposed to be class one fit uh, bolts. So you could literally drop a nut or a bolt in the dirt and pick it back up and, and screw back together with dirt and stuff in it, was the point behind that. Uh, two, be a class two. Class two. Um, I'm just going to copy what it is. So it is a, quote, free fit. And what the hell does that mean? Well, it's less slop than the number one. Uh, 
uh, aircraft screws, not bolts, screws. Screws are uh, generally class two. All right, then we got class three. A medium fit. Uh, assembled by hand with little or no movement. Aircraft bolts are class three. And then we have class four. And it's considered a close fit. A wrench is required to assemble. External threads only, right? Mm, no, really. Okay. Because it takes internal and external to make it go together. So uh, in that case, so we uh, covered how uh, screws fall under class two and bolts fall under class three. What class does that fall under? When you get into nuts, <laughs> screws in aircraft got number four, number six, number eight, number ten. So, a four, six, and eight nut would be for a screw. Okay. And number ten is also a three sixteenths. And it goes three sixteenths, quarter inch, five sixteenths, and on. So, the only one that would share would be that number ten, which is also three sixteenths. So, if I had to nail me down to that, I would say the four, six, and eight would be screw nuts, class two, and then the ten on up would be bolts and that would be class three but now I'm making up stuff as I go. So uh, they just are. That's a terrible thing to say. I don't know, I just grab my bin and use it, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it works, it works. <laughs> yeah well they're supposed to work. All right, uh, let's see Adam you're gonna want to write this this one down here. <laughs> Thread direction. Mm. We should maybe start off with righty, tidy, lefty, loosey. Probably should just have started the lecture with that one. Red direction. <laughs> Almost all threads. Yeah, remember how you open up a soda pop bottle? A right hand for Yeah, from New York. <laughs> Right hand threads. What that means is, I don't know, it's about righty tighty, <laughs> lefty and loosey. <laughs> 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 so I don't know. Righty yeah, tighty, lefty loosey. Loosey is a word. Is that a word? Righty tighty and tell go loosey. There's got to be something about your tidy whities in there too. I don't know what. You do, <laughs> you do your, your, your hold up two L's and whichever one uh, actually looks like an L to the left. This one looks like an R. <laughs> <laughs> Almost all threads are right hand threads. 
left hand thread there are but there are left hand threads so what happens if you have something that's a left hand thread and you try and loosen it by going lefty loosey make it tighter and tighter and tighter it becomes a lefty loosey eventually the bang clutches then then it still doesn't come you put some uh, uh, you put some, uh, penetrating, oil it, you it overnight, no, you put some uh, penetrating oil on it you let it sit overnight no the next day bar on it then you well, yeah you put a cheater bar and then when that doesn't work you put some penetrating oil and then you try heat yeah and then you get a bigger Bigger bar, and then Parker becomes lefty Lucy. Then it eventually becomes lefty Lucy. So everything, everything will loosen up in the left hand position if you try hard enough. Right? If you use enough air on a pneumatic wrench. All right. Three thuggas for Exactly. Left hand threads are usually marked in some way. Not always. So like if these were left hand nuts, they would usually take like a hacksaw, if you will, and just cut a little bit, just a little bit of a hash mark on each one of the corners of the bolt. That would be a way that you would see, a very common way of, of seeing left hand threads. It just looks like someone used the wrong size wrench on <laughs> no, it's just one little cut, like a hacksaw blade. Just <clears throat> not even marking this, but is there like a specific application? Like yes, a you will see left-hand threads in some sort of application whereby something is turning to the left, and that would tend to loosen it. For example, I think on my plane, the only thing that is left-hand thread is the tack drive seal. So from the engine, you have the gears, and the gears turn a little uh, shaft that is meant to turn a tachometer cable, and it turns to the left when viewed this way. And so um, as it would turn left, it would tend to, sorry, I'm doing it backwards, tend to turn left, it would tend to loosen up the uh, cap that goes on with the seal inside of it. So um, left, in this case, tightens it, and right loosens it. I told you guys that story, why I got a good deal on my airplane. A terrible oil leak and they could fix it. Uh, oh yeah, I think was left hand. Oh yeah, I bought my airplane and I, I guess yeah, oh you were there because yeah, I was no, talking it. Yeah, you called him right back up. Oh yeah, I fixed that oil leak. Yeah. Oh shit, really? When I, when I when I pre bought we look at the airplane before I bought it. The, on the strut for the nose wheel, there's like a little cup right there, just the way it's made. And it was full of oil. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I go, this thing must have a big oil leak. There's a lot of oil there. And the guy would buy it from no, no, not at all. I'm like, well, the belly's really clean, and there's oil in that, so I kind of feel like maybe wiped it down, but I trusted him. And, and you know, by, the, by the time I got to Salt Lake City, and the oil was just covered in the belly, and it was actually dripping off of the tail hook on the tail of the airplane. And I was just, I mean, I, know, I just, I was just devastated. I'm like, God, what did I do? It's, I hadn't slept for weeks, and felt like I'm tired, and I'm just pissed off. And anyway, so I got a hotel room, felt better the next day, brought it home, cleaned it all up. And uh, I couldn't, what, every time I'd fly it, man, there's just a lot of oil in the belly, but I could never find where it was coming from. And one day I was doing, I think I had the oil filter off, and I could see down in there, and I saw it drip. Like, there it is, it's a tax seal. So I, I had to change a tax seal. I know that it's left-hand thread, because I built those engines. And so I had a half-inch breaker bar on it. And I was like, and I couldn't do it. And then I had a bar about yay big going to the right. And I had to put some heat on it. Finally, it popped loose. And I'm like, man, somebody was trying to loosen this thing up. Because I didn't know how tight it should have been. So they obviously had a cheater bar going the other way <laughs> and trying to loosen it. They, somebody knew that that was leaking. That's my theory. And tried to change it and couldn't. And just learned to deal with this. And so, yes, when I eventually was talking to the guy bought it, who's a very nice man, by the way, a really, really big guy. He's um, a complete liar. Yeah. I, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's pathological. I, 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 and I said, yeah, man, I'm, you know, I'm loving the planes. Like, yeah, I see you fly it all the time. I go, it's so much nicer now that I fix that oil leak. Oh, yeah, oil leak, huh? <laughs> like, yeah, it was just like a $3 tax seal. <laughs> just a dead silence on the other end. <laughs> all you have to do is just know that it's left-hand thread. It pops right out. I changed my mind. Click. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, so you, you just got, hung up right after. You got so. your plane cheap because of that? You, you, you talking down? Or? No, he lied. He said it didn't have an oil leak. You know, I yeah, knew what the plane was worth when I was talking. This is way off the topic. And it was listed for a certain price. And I was thinking, man, I, you know. And the guy on the phone, the broker, was, yeah, 
I think he just dropped it like, it's still like a number is like 20,000 less. Yeah, but I know the lowest he'll take is like, you know, oh, 90. That's yeah. all lowest he'll go. And I'm like, okay. I remember you saying that. <laughs> well, why, why not just start with that? <laughs> so, uh, sold. <laughs> all right. Uh, okay, thread direction. Righty tidy, lefty loosey. Yeah? Unless. Unless it's got some sort of hash mark or something on it, and it's not. Okay, that brings me to pipe threads. Pipe threads. Let's see what I got going on here. What kind of pictures I got? Can't that not working. Take the only picture. Now we're stuck. Uh oh. Just work with that. Just watch that tap and dice forever now. <laughs> what a cool works. All right. Ah, yes. Apparently, we just got it. Something wants to run. I can see that. What is causing me problems? Yeah, you know what that means? No. Really? It's a big word for Elmo. <laughs> All right, we're back. Yay, okay. All right. Woo. All right, he's there. All right, so we are, we're, since 309, we're very well familiar with this chart. Record it. Yeah. 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 All right. Find threads on top, coarse threads on the bottom. <coughs> Go back to this, maybe. <coughs> All right, pipe threads. Pipe threads are not intuitive in any way, shape, or form. A 1 8 inch pipe thread is about, I was going to say about half an inch across. It's 0. 0.406 across. So 8 inch pipe Easy. is nearly half an inch. <laughs> See inside diameter, right? A quarter right? inch, it's, yeah. Uh, it's how they measure it. I think pipes are measured by the inside. Not really, because think about that. That's the plug right there that goes in it. This is the plug that goes inside oh. of the pipe. It's your top end. Oh. So this is not an eighth inch up here. So it's nearly half an inch. A quarter inch is a little over half an inch. Three eighths is, I don't know what that is. Five, seven, five? Yeah, six, seven, five. Six, seven, five. Yeah. So five, we see. Yeah. One inch is 1.32. It is not intuitive. You just have to either learn it or get, this page came out of uh, General Aircraft Hardware. In the page, it's, it's an exact, uh, exact size. So you just lay it on top of that and go, okay. Uh, I always start with an eighth inch. I, you hand me an eighth inch pipe plug, I'll know it. Oh, that's eighth inch pipe plug. And I go up from there. Next size up and then be quarter or three eighths. So that is your pipe thread. Up top, this is hose fittings. These are flared fittings, which we'll get into a little bit. And so it's very different, but we have to be kind of careful because, um, let me see, some, some of the stuff kind of crosses over. Like uh, 3 8 pipe is 3 8 18. There's something that's over here. I know something in here fits kind of well. It's maybe not exactly, but it gets close. <coughs> 12, this dash 12 here kind of fits over the half inch. You can see how close they are to the same size. The quarter over here, quarter 20, um, kind of gets really close to this quarter 18 over here. So you just gotta be super careful. What's that minus 16, minus 12, minus 10? Here? Yeah. Uh, threads per inch. Per Thread, oh, okay. Oh. Um, oh, no, it's, sorry, it's the part number, dash 16. Oh. So that's like 12 threads, 12 inch, or 12 threads per inch, 12, 14, 16, let's see, 20, 20. Yeah, some of this, it just kind of lines up. Just enough where it almost works, but it doesn't. And it's not like you get close. All right, since we're talking about pipe and hoses. Um, okay, so pipe fitting. I don't think I have any pictures of pipe fitting. Yes, I do. You need to identify what we're looking at here. And at some point, even one of my orals, I pull out this stuff, not in this class, another class. So I'm like, okay, which fitting goes into this, this, this component? And there are, these are called AN fittings, by the way. We just call them AN pipe fittings or AN fittings, just for short. So this one right up here on the very top, right 
that is all hose. You see how it has that flare on there? That's right. Okay. And the hose on the internal side, that flare matches up to this. So it's a flare to flare fitting on there. And this isn't the hose class, so I'm not going to go into all the dimensions and stuff on that and uh, what they are. It's different than automotive, I'll tell you that. So you can't mix and match automotive. Uh, but anyway, that's flare to flare. This is pipe. No flare. No flare whatsoever. Tapered it's, thread. it's fluid and air. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, sealant from how tight it gets. Because as you screw this into pipe, uh, pipe, it gets wider and wider, and as it does, it wedges itself in there and locks itself in. Now, the unfortunate thing about that is if you are working with something, you know, aluminum, and this is aluminum, you can tell by the color, blue is aluminum, as you're screwing this in, maybe you get a little tiny leak. So you're like, oh, I'm just going to tighten it a little bit more, tighten a little bit more, and it still leaks just a tiny bit. I'm going to give it just another. You're wedging it in. And sometimes you will then split the thing that you're screwing it into. And if that was a very expensive carburetor or something, that's okay. You just buy a new carburetor. Carburetor, yeah. Very expensive carburetor. Would um, pipe tape work in that instance? Is that a viable solution for aviation? Okay. That same we are too. never, ever supposed to use Teflon tape, ever. Because there have been airworthiness directives issued on carburetors because somebody used Teflon tape. Oh, yeah. Oh, so it's like, I, I've yeah. heard that it's before. Hard, it like, causes a crystallization in the gas. Is that right? No, I've never heard that. Like, it just it can get off, and that the Teflon threads can get into ports and stuff and block up. Oh. Uh, there are many places where it is called for to use Teflon paste. Oh, so paste is fine. Paste is fine, yeah. So okay. you just can't use the tape that you can get the And I will tell you this, write this down. Never, ever, ever <clears throat> screw aluminum pipe into a piece of aluminum. Or any type of threads. Aluminum, aluminum, aluminum threads. Aluminum, aluminum. Never screw aluminum into aluminum. Dry. Ever. Ever, ever. And why is that? I almost destroyed an engine doing that. Um, and it's <coughs> almost, to this day, it's kind of unbelievable. Um, <laughs> On the light combing engines, there's a inch and something. It's a very large um, diameter threads that is part of the oil pressure relief. And I was building an engine. You have to understand when I built engines, it was always like this boss coming in every five minutes. When's this engine going? When's this engine going? Because you know there was always huge paydays. You know, twenty to thirty thousand dollars coming in that week when I finished the engine. So it's always you know, so there's a lot of pressure to get the engine done. Uh, and I was just at the last final stages, just putting the oil pressure relief on, and I picked it up, put it on there, and I started to screw it on. And I mean, it was still that far from the shoulder hitting. It was just still in the threaded, I mean, barely started it, and it stuck. I go, you know, let's be a little burr or something. That's okay, I'll just grab a wrench and just put it on and go past the burr. And it wouldn't go. I'm like, well, that's weird. Yeah, I mean, it locked solid and went to take it off. It would not move at all. Did it get hot and weld itself together? I screwed it on by hand. Oh, man. I was barely doing it. What it happened? It, it galled. It galled. It galled. It galled. It galled. And the two bonded together. And so um, galling means it picked up a piece of aluminum and stuck it in there. And when I, I had to force it with a big wrench off, and it, it ruined the threads in the case, which means the whole engine had to come apart. And the case would have to be sent out for a weird well tap. Thankfully, it's a very special thread. I mean, it's not like something you can get. We were able to locate the thread with a giant tap. And I got the tap, and I was able to clean up the threads real well, and, and it was fine. I got it back together. But at that point, it was like, never again in my life would I stick any of this stuff. I should have, I should have had oil on it anyway. What, what would but, you do with it? Would you put something steel or something in there? Or, or what type of metal would you, what type of... Oh, it's, it's it fine. Dry. Aluminum goes on aluminum. Don't do it dry. Ah, okay. okay. So okay. I okay. always so use anti-seize. Yeah. Okay. Always. Or Teflon paste. Okay. So anti-seize would also kind of help as a sealant, or...? Uh, it just keeps the threads from seizing. Yeah, yeah. So that's the name. So, all right, so we have flare and flare. That is not pipe. We have pipe here. And this one's kind of funny. It's called a bulkhead fitting, which just... It's called a bulkhead fitting because right between this nut and this flange, 
you would find this on a firewall of an aircraft. Firewall literally separates you from the engine in case there's a fire, it's a wall for the fire. So if you had to have a hose that went from the engine to the inside of the cockpit, like a fuel hose or oil hose, you use these right here. So this screws on, attaches to the firewall. One hose will come up to here, then the second hose goes that way, so it's a, a barrier. But takeaway from that is we do not screw hoses onto pipe, pipe, pipe. and we never put aluminum into aluminum. Dry. Dry. This side is what? This side is? Height. Height. You guys are in my best class. All right. Back to this. We got pipe threads. What is this little thing called? Thread, thread, thread pitch gauge. Do you remember the trick to using a thread pitch gauge? Go through every single one and figure it Yes, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, okay, 10, 11, 12, 13, there's 14 here, probably another 28. So you got to figure out the thread pitch. You have a one in 28 chance of getting it, right? Yeah. Nope. No. 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 Because they're, the they're all the same. Because sometimes they'll double up. A 14 might fit on a 28. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You're right. So we're going to use this chart here. We're going to use a dial caliper. We're going to measure the diameter, diameter of the shank. 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 And let's say we got five sixteenths out of it. Then. You, uh, it's either going to be a 5 16 24, 5 16 18. 5 16 24, or 5 16 18. So you can be fine thread at 24 inches, or of course thread at 18. What happens if you fit a 20 on there? Uh, you can only get right now. <laughs> you did it wrong. It's only going to be a 24 or an 18. Everybody follows that? Because we have 309, so I don't want to too much time on that. But if somebody doesn't get it, I want to make sure you get it. Cause why are we redoing it? Just as a good refresher, make sure everybody's on the same page. Okay. Um, oh, I know where we're at. We are still talking about pipe threads. Pipe threads are tapered. Tapered to um, give an air slash fluid tight fit. Tapered to give air slash fluid tight fit. So as you screw it together, screw it together, they get tight. I said earlier, pipe sizing is not intuitive. <coughs> so use the chart. Use the chart. And where did I find that chart? Uh, genuine aircraft hardware company. They're a nice company. Never. Never screw pipe into non-pipe. Is the general aircraft hardware on canvas, by the way? It is, and I have a lot of paper copies of that book. Genuine okay. or genuine? Genuine. Oh, genuine. You said genuine, then he said genuine. What did you say? I said general. Oh, wrong. Well, because I'm right. <laughs> All right, so I think that's about all I can really say about pipe threads. Other than just please, 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 I beg of you, be careful. Think it through before you're putting stuff together, especially in the next class when we get into engines. You will cause so much damage to these engines. And what happens when you damage the engine? Got to buy a new one. You're responsible for fixing it. I don't do it. I don't have spares. I don't have extras. You're responsible for fixing it. I had one of my students was not careful in taking an engine. You'll, I'll, I'll remind you of this, but you use cylinder-based wrenches and they, they kind of go around the cylinder. And in some places, you can only get a little bit of a, a throw on the wrench. This guy just put on there, and, just, and the wrench went up and got the push rod housing and the push rod tube and just bent them up. Oh, I just handed it back to him, say, by next week, bring me new ones. And he had to go buy new ones. So, yes. Um, for, I had experience working with hard lines. We call them hard lines and soft lines. Right. 
they were still hose fittings. They're still hose fittings. But Same they thing. were yes. steel or aluminum hard bent lines. So you can you can see a, a pipe looking device that is still considered a hose, right? That's yes. Still, okay. That is still a hose. And I probably should say that. So he's right. We have rigid hose. If you want to think about this way, uh, rigid and flexible hoses. So a rigid hose, if you want to call it that, we don't. We just call it tubing. Um, it has the same ends as a hose. In fact, in some cases, you'll see applications where one airplane will have a hard line and the, the sister airplane right next to it is the exact same thing and that spot has a hose. There are instances where a owner decides to just switch from a hard line to a hose. Hard lines suck to install. They kind of do, yeah. yes. So they're like interchangeable, you can do either one? I don't want to say you can, yeah, because people, you don't necessarily get the choice on these things sometimes. And, and if you just, depending on the application, just decided that, hey, I think I'm going to make this a hard line, you can get in a lot of trouble. Like, for example, uh, out of my airplane, or all airplanes, you have the gas escalator, which is the lowest point on the fuel system where the fuel strainer is. And then it's mounted to the firewall. And then there's a hose that goes from there to the carburetor or the fuel injection. If you decided that you don't want a hose because you have to replace them and they're very, very expensive, that you're going to do a hard line, you'd be in a lot of trouble because the firewall does not move and the engine does. And so that will crack and break and fuel will leak out everywhere and you will cause problems. So that is not something you want to do. However, I want to say on the light combings with the rear, no, I'm not say that, they have a, a rear governor. I think in some cases you were allowed to put a hose. So, uh, all right, never screw that. Okay, pipe, uh, let see, thread directions, pipe threads, types of taps. Well, there's keg types and there's... There's dance types. Types that go on your shoes, right? Tap shoe, types of shoe. Uh, type, so three types. One, we have the taper tap. I'm going to show you a picture. I like it. There we go. Seems a little blurry to me. Three types. We have the taper, which is not very many threads right there. You can see how it makes it really easy to start because the threads are almost non-existent and it kind of wedges itself into the hole sort of straight up and down to help you keep it straight up and down, and then it starts going. So you have the, the uh, tapered, we have the plug, which is similar, but not quite as tapered, and then the uh, bottoming tap. Bottoming tap, you can see they've cut off the tip, and it is designed so that you can get threads as close to a bottom of a blind hole as possible. A blind hole is a hole that does not go through. It's just, you know, like, there, that's a blind hole. It doesn't come out the bottom. If you wanted threads all the way through my cup, which kind of? You want bottom, bottom tap. Bottom. A bottoming tap to get threads all the way down near the bottom. <laughs> Taper tap the first part and then bottom tap the rest. You are absolutely correct. There was a hole in it. All right, so taper, <coughs> taper uh, for starting threads or threads in thin metal. Uh, we have the plug. So it's, it's just kind of a medium between the two. Um, for chasing or something like that? No, all of them would be <coughs> fine for chasing. They really would. Um, used after a taper tap to cut threads. near the bottom of the hole. And then we have the bottoming. <laughs> You'll like this. And these are not my words, they're like exact words out of the book. Um, used to cut threads
nearly to the bottom of the hole. All right, so we have near, nearly, we have medium fit, loose fit, medium fit, loose fit, tight fit. We have all of these subjective words that just kind of throw yeah. out. So <laughs> have fun with that. He's got an AP. But I would tell you this, that a bottoming tap, you can go back, we can go back and look at the pictures. If you ask me just, hey, Kevin, what's a bottoming tap for? I'd say, well, it's the cut holes close to the bottom because it's still tapered at the very end so you're not going to get all the way to the bottom well what's the difference between a plug tap and a taper tap i'd say well about three threads the, the, about three threads you know <laughs> those two right there that's about it and uh, it's inch. it's a light taper if you ask me and then taper is just more of a taper <laughs> more light okay whoa what is, what is chamfer right? the bottom i keep seeing that word chamfer just like when it down plug it out like a countersunk, okay. as a champ. Uh, Takeaway from that is, I think I would always start with either the taper or the plug. To plug it, I would, if I have a taper, I'm gonna always start with the taper no matter what. Start with the taper. Um, if it's not a blind hole and I can get all the way through with this one, then you're done. Just go all the way through with that one. Make sure you get all the way into the thick part of the threads. All the way through, all the way back out. If it's bottom, if it's got a blind hole, I'm gonna go down here to the bottomy tap. Use, start with the taper. Finish with the bottoming tap, and then clean out the hole. How are you going to clean out the hole? Put some gas, baby. Put some gas in there, light a match, and blow yeah, it out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, put some brake cleaner in there, huh? Brake cleaner, light it. Or like well, alcohol. Or something. You're talking about cleaning all the oil out of there? Um, Sorry, I didn't hear Blind, blind holes. Blind holes. How are you going to clean oh, out Oh, air compressor? And and yeah, use shop air, blow it out. Uh, remember, pack this with wax. You'll get most of, most of it out. Beeswax works really, really well. Vacuum. Vacuum does not work as well. All right, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Coerce it out. Break that.